Welcome to Starbound, where every star tells a story. Today, can a primitive tech save a race blinded by their own brilliance? Let's get into the story. The Zylonians were an enigma to us, a proud and hyper-advanced race who saw themselves as the pinnacle of cosmic achievement. From their towering chrome cities to the sleek contours of their starships, they used technological superiority. It wasn't just tech. The way they carried themselves with an elegance born of supreme confidence. It's like a nonverbal taunt aimed at every other species in the galaxy. I was Alex Carter, an engineer on the deep space vessel Pioneer. Our mission, to map the far reaches of the Vela Quadrant, establish contact with potential civilizations, and maybe, just maybe, find evidence we weren't alone in this infinite expanse. The irony wasn't lost on me. The most remarkable discovery I'd make that day would be of the decidedly crash-landing variety. A freak magnetic surge fried the Pioneer's navigation. We spun wildly in the cosmic dark until I executed a less-than-graceful landing on the nearest celestial body, a jade-green planet the Zylonians had long ago cataloged and deemed uninteresting. My only consolation was that they would know something was amiss. Rescue, surely, was on the way. It took three standard galactic days in solitude for that hope to die. I'd cobbled together a rough translator to decode the alien chatter buzzing from the nearest settlement, a place of crystalline spires and shimmering force fields. What I heard wasn't concern over the pioneer. It was something far grimmer. Even with the translator's help, it took a while to understand the scale of what was happening. Their energy network, the lifeblood of their entire civilization was on the verge of collapse. Zylonian arrogance had proven to be their Achilles heel. They chased the grand, the bleeding edge of energy tech, exotic matter manipulation, dimensional phase shifting, the usual hyper-advanced stuff that looks great until the day the whole cosmic Rube Goldberg machine falls apart. Turns out, while chasing the next big thing, they'd utterly neglected the old, reliable technologies. Now, their cities were starting to wink out, one by one. Their broadcast turned from dismissive reports to tones of barely-veiled panic. I hesitated, feeling the familiar pull of self-preservation that would have had any sane person staying hidden until the Zylonians came looking. But there's something about the end-of-the-world panic that awakens a strange kind of boldness. With a jerry-rigged universal comm device, I injected myself into their comms network. The silence that followed was more unnerving than a outright rebuttal. Uh, I'm Alex Carter of the Terran vessel Pioneer. It looks like you've got an energy problem. I said, trying to sound like I hadn't spent the last day subsisting on freeze-dried algae paste. Uh, believe it or not, I might be able to help. Hello? A Zylonian voice finally crackled through the comms, dripping with contempt. Terran. Your race barely mastered interstellar travel. Your energy tech is likely from the galactic equivalent of the Stone Age. It drawled. Why waste our time further with your primitive offerings? My pride stung, but I bit it back. This wasn't about ego. It was about survival, theirs and possibly my own. You think solar arrays are primitive? I shot back. Or... Harnessing geothermal activity? Sustainable? Stable? I trailed off. There was a different tone to the silence this time, a hint of consideration replacing the earlier scorn. Perhaps. Elaborate. The Zylonian finally said. So I talked. I explained concepts they'd long dismissed. Solar panels blanketing deserts. Turbines nestled within volcanic vents. Tides harnessed on a scale that would make ancient humanity gawk. It was like teaching the alphabet to someone who'd always communicated with abstract equations. Yet behind that initial disdain, the Zylonians were brilliant. I wasn't just giving a lecture, it was a frantic, collaborative brainstorm. Hours stretched into a day, our voices the only constants amidst the creeping darkness of their failing planet. With every new concept, every translation of old Terran blueprints, I could sense the tide was turning. It wasn't just desperation, there was a dawning sliver of what might have been respect. Then it hit me. 
The twist. The solution the Xylonians, in their obsession with the exotic, had utterly overlooked. Your planet, I began hesitantly. Geologically, it's incredibly young. Massive core heat, volcanic activity. I paused, feeling an almost giddy sense of revelation. Their world sat on a vast, untapped energy source, and the key component was, in their terms, practically space junk. Or a calteen. I all but whispered the name. It was a superconductive mineral, rare in the galaxy and sought after by collectors. But on their world, it bubbled out of geysers, littered volcanic ridges. The disbelieving silence from the Xylonians was my confirmation. They'd mistaken potential for refuse. For a glorious moment, I was the superior one, privy to the simple truth their eyes had skipped over. Alex Carter. The lead Xylonian addressed me directly, her tone altered. If even a fraction of what you claim is true, your world may have just saved ours. It took another day of feverish work. My pioneer had landed in, fortuitously, or a calteen rich badlands, a wasteland they hadn't bothered exploring. I rigged a crude harvesting setup, cobbled together enough raw material for a proof of concept. The comms buzzed as their top engineers scrutinized my work with a newfound reverence. The real challenge was adapting our tech to theirs. Their energy grids pulsed with harmonics that could fry a human in an instant. That's when I learned the Xylonians were stubborn, yes, but not stupid. Every hour brought a new breakthrough. Their engineers reverse engineering our primitive solutions and then supercharging them with levels of efficiency I'd only theorized about. Our collaboration was frantic, filled with tense arguments and moments of shared exhilaration. Word must have spread because when the first sliver of power flickered back into the nearest city, it wasn't just their engineers, it was the entire population fixated on our comms. Every flicker of light in that city was a testament to our unlikely alliance. The energy rippled outwards, one city, then another, until the whole world started to glow as if from within. It was a dazzling sight from my vantage point, a planet humming back to life. The Xylonians had taken our humble tech and turned it into a symphony played on a galactic scale. The comms fell silent. Then a single voice, the lead Xylonian I'd been working with. Alex Carter of Terra. We owe you our world. It said, and there was something I'd never thought I'd hear in that voice. Humility. The Pioneer was repaired in record time. They practically ushered me off their now radiant world. Their parting words a strange echo of our first conversation. Your technology may be simple. But it works. Remember that, Theron. You may yet surprise us all. Rescue turned into a diplomatic event. My reports, the story of the aliens who scoffed and then been saved by forgotten Earth tech, caused a sensation. News broadcasts blared, politicians tripped over themselves with speeches. The galaxy suddenly had a newfound respect for our backwater planet. As for me... I was still Alex Carter, engineer. Fame held little appeal, but out there, amidst the shimmer of the Vela Quadrant, a jade-green planet thrummed with power. That power flowed from the tech we'd considered ordinary, harnessed to its full potential by those who'd once seen us as insignificant. The Xylonians had a proverb for unexpected moments. They called them flips of the sky. For me, the greatest flip of them all was that sometimes the most advanced tech in the galaxy, the stuff that saves entire worlds, is the tech you learn to take for granted. Time passed as it always does. Galactic trade boomed and Terra found itself not just tolerated, but actively sought out as a partner. Our renewable energy solutions were the envy of civilizations far more advanced, leading to collaborations and tech sharing at a level that seemed impossible before the incident, as it became known. Sure, old habits die hard. There was the occasional Xylonian diplomat who couldn't hide their lingering disdain upon visiting our quaint solar farms or the condescending remark from other species about our reliance on ancient tech. But for every condescending glance, there were ten more looks of genuine curiosity, even admiration. 
The change wasn't all sunshine and interspecies hand-holding. Our planet had to grow, and fast. The surge in demand for solar panels, geothermal tech, and raw materials triggered a kind of gold rush. Fortunes made and lost. Industries revitalized, conflicts over resource rights, the usual human cocktail. And for all the chaos, there was a sense of purpose I'd never felt before. Earth wasn't scrambling to catch up to the cosmic glitterati anymore. We were carving our own niche. Then came the delegation. The Zylonians led by the voice I hadn't heard in years. The lead engineer who'd been the first to acknowledge our help. They arrived not in a sleek warship, but in an unassuming cargo freighter. The message was clear. This was about more than diplomacy. Alex Carter. The lead Zylonian addressed me. And despite the passing years, I could sense the weight in their tone. We have tracked a trajectory of a dead star on collision course with a cluster of heavily inhabited systems. The technology is lacking. It is a humanitarian crisis on a staggering scale. I understood immediately. They wanted our help, yes, but not as saviors. They wanted to learn to pass on the lesson they'd absorbed the hard way. The Galactic Renewal Initiative, as it was clumsily named, became my new obsession. It wasn't just about deploying solar arrays and drilling geothermal vents. Anyone could do that with the right blueprints. It was about changing perspectives. I led teams of engineers, Earthborn and Zylonian, traveling to worlds that were like reflections of the Zylonian arrogance of the past, utterly convinced of their own superiority. I told the story, my crash landing, my primitive solution, and the transformation of an entire planet's mindset. Sometimes it was met with sneers. Others, like the brilliant crustacean-like Aquilans, obsessed with manipulating the fabric of space, would listen with wide compound eyes, then spend days debating whether simplicity held its own form of elegance. Each successful outreach was a small victory, a testament to the oddity of our alliance. Zylonians, known for their cold efficiency, became unlikely champions of sustainable tech. They brought to the table their unmatched ability to optimize and integrate, turning our humble solutions into feats of galactic engineering. It was a bizarre and beautiful partnership forged under the threat of annihilation. The Renewal Initiative was messy, frustrating, and occasionally mired in intergalactic bureaucracy, more convoluted than a quantum knot. There were failures, worlds too wrapped in their pride to listen, others too far gone by the time we got there. But for each heartbreaking loss, there were the moments that kept me going. I stood on the balcony of a newly completed power plant on Thalia 4, its people in avian race grappling with the consequences of unrestrained strip mining. Their feathers had dulled a visible sign of their dying world. When the lights flickered, a wave of shimmering blue washed over the crowd. It was more than just electricity, it was a tangible glimmer of hope and eyes grown accustomed to despair. Alex Carter wasn't a hero. I was a stubborn engineer, a reminder of a truth the galaxy sometimes needed a smack on the head to remember. Brilliance didn't always lie in the impossibly complex. Sometimes, survival depended on rediscovering the basics. Of course, sometimes the reminder needed a little extra oomph. There was the incident on Xylar Prime, a world encased in a perpetual smog of their own making. Their solution was a vast orbital filter of absurdly complex design, a testament more to their pride than to practicality. After weeks of stalled negotiation, a team of Xylonian engineers, who now carried a subtle hint of Earth-style pragmatism, took the lead. With the theatrical flair worthy of a Terran showman, they pointed at our old, beat-up pioneer still docked with the Zylarian station. Do you see that ship? It runs on solar, they declared. The Zylarians gasped, horrified by the very concept. The Zylarian project was scrapped, replaced by a network of solar towers that shattered through the smog three months later. The galactic press had a field day with the headlines, Aliens too smart for sunlight, saved by human relic. Decades rolled by, and the Renewal Initiative became less of a panic scramble and more of a guiding philosophy. The galaxy wasn't perfect, but there was a change. The arrogant assumption of technological superiority became tempered with a touch of necessary humility. I grew old, 
or as old as advanced medical tech allowed. The Pioneer became a museum piece, a relic of a time before our unexpected alliance. The Xylonians, ever true to their aesthetic, created a rather beautiful exhibit around it. Towering panels of solar arrays refracting light into brilliant patterns with a single inscription. Sometimes, the simplest path is the most profound. I liked visiting it, sitting in the old pilot's chair and being bombarded by memories. It felt right that cocky little ship that crash-landed on a dying world had become a monument to the best the galaxy could offer, when arrogance gave way to something resembling wisdom. My con chimed one evening, and I smiled when I saw the name on the display. It was the lead Zylonian, older, too, their voice a bit slower, but still carrying that distinct Zylonian edge. Alex Carter. They started, and I knew it wasn't a social call. We have intercepted a transmission, an automated distress signal from deep space, very faint. Coordinates attached. I read the coordinates, a chill running through my old bones. I ran the Vela Quadrant, perilously close to where the Pioneer had nearly met its end. Ancient Terran? The Xylodian asked, and I could almost hear the faint irony in their tone. Should we investigate? I should have said no. Perhaps a smarter man, a wiser man would have. After a lifetime of pushing the boundaries, of proving the unexpected worth of old things, the galaxy finally seemed a bit safer, a bit smarter. But then Alex Carter, the engineer, had never been the wise type. Power up the engines, I said, a grin stretching across my wrinkled face. Looks like we got one more lesson to teach. It wasn't the sleek vessels of my youth that carried us out into the quadrant. It was a joint build marvel. The sleek, angular lines of Xylonian design tempered with the stubborn pragmatism of human engineering. I insisted on solar arrays, a touch of nostalgia, a touch of defiance. After all, the last time we journeyed into this stellar expanse, it all started with sunlight. The signal resolved itself as we drew closer. An artifact, a drift in the depths of space. It pulsed weakly, a relic beacon of an unknown civilization. I imagined countless other species ignoring it, drawn to the brighter, louder signals of more advanced worlds. But we weren't them. We docked with the ancient construct, its hull a testament to forgotten tech, eerily similar to the bleeding-edge tech the Xylonians once sought and had ultimately left behind. Inside, it was a testament to desperation. Energy signatures flickered weakly, life support fading. We moved through the lifeless corridors, Xylonian and Terran engineers side by side, sharing a kinship born of that shared ideal so long ago. We found them, insectoid beings, their exoskeletons dim with the weakness of a dying ship. It was an echo of what could have happened to the Xylonians, pride blinding them to their own fallibility. My engineers didn't hesitate. They jury-rigged solar arrays onto the ship's hull, routed power from our own reserves. The Xylonians, masters of efficiency by now, reworked their failing systems, channeling life back into the ancient ship. The first insectoid to revive fixed its multifaceted eyes on me. You pretend. It rasped, its translator crackling with static. Why? And gestured towards the Xylonian beside me, who, for the first time, didn't stand sleek and aloof, but slightly hunched in posture, I somehow found oddly comforting. We learned a few things along the way. I started, then paused. How do you explain the complexities of arrogance, redemption, and the strange twists of fate to a being you just saved from extinction? I settled on the truth, stripped down the same way our tech often was. The ones who dazzle brightest sometimes blind themselves to the light all around them. I said, we know that now, both of us. The insectoid's mandibles clicked, perhaps a version of a nod. It extended a spindly limb, and in a gesture that transcended species and our wild differences, clasped it around my wrist. It was a connection forged in the depths of space, proof that the most profound lessons weren't learned in gleaming laboratories, but in the harsh light of near extinction. We spent cycles assisting the insectoids, 
guiding them towards systems where their ships could be repaired and their species could find a new foothold. There was a gratitude in their eyes and a tentative spark of collaboration. It was a fragile thing, that spark. But maybe that was how it was meant to be. The galaxy didn't change overnight. Not because of me or the Zylonians or some grand act of interstellar heroism. But if we could change one dying planet, one dying ship, well, that seemed enough. The journey home was quiet. My Zylonian companions, ever a stoic lot, retreated into their customary silence. It was a contemplative silence, not the dismissive one of the past. They had changed irrevocably. And despite the light years separating us now, perhaps some small part of Earth had rubbed off on them. Exiting warp near the lush green of our own world, we were hailed, not in the panic tones of a civilization on the brink, but in the steady hum of organized activity. Zylonian vessels shimmered in orbit, not as conquerors this time, but as partners. Alex Carter. The lead Zylonian addressed me, their voice echoing across the bridge. We have tracked a series of promising geothermal sites across your continents. May we begin surveying? I stared at our blue marble, at the scars left by our own growth, the burgeoning signs of a planet healing itself. Welcome to Earth, I said, and there was a hint of shared pride in my voice. But first, let me show you our solar farms. We've made some improvements. The future, I realized then, wasn't about one race being right or better. It was about the messy, beautiful, never-ending dance of learning, of sharing, of building a galaxy where the brightest lights didn't blind us to the simpler solutions, to our common ground. I was still Alex Carter, engineer, stubborn, more than a little eccentric, and eternally hopeful. But now, I wasn't alone. And as our ship descended, powered by the same eternal starlight that had once saved an alien world, well, the galaxy seemed just a little bit brighter for it. <laughs>